<laughs> Thank you, Judy. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Okay. Well, I'm a little, I'm a little bit happier and a little bit more bubbly because you know. Uh, someone has sent me a generous donation. That was I was gonna put a smile in my face, so I'm thankful for that. And I'm gonna do part two of Venus and Scorpio. Although I gotta say, I think I did sort of an injustice in Venus and Scorpio part one when it deals when dealing with the female. I find myself repeating the same things over and over in that video. And different emotional intensities. So I was going to delete the video and do it over because I felt that I was repeating the things over and over again with the same intensity. The YouTube executives love the video and they want me to keep the video on the air and that I need to be repetitious because this is an aspect of Venus and Scorpio that was really important to discuss. Yes, I'm the astrologer at the end of the day, and I determine what's important and what's not important to put on the air. Not the YouTube executives. But the fact that they found something useful with the video, because I was a, I'm Virgo, I'm a perfectionist, so I was about to delete the video, but they want me to keep the video. So this uh, part two will be almost an hour, because I'm going to involve the esoteric as well as the exoteric for both men and women born with the Venus in Scorpio. I will also touch a little bit on the retrogrades. Here, we see complexity of the ego and the personality reaches the greatest height of complexity. Here, um, astrology alone will not satisfy the bill. Even though astrology is the plaintiff of all templates, you have to understand that there's a psychological component, a psychosocial behavioral component to the signs of the zodiac. You know, this is all theoretical, and it can become existential upon practice. A man knows himself by action, by thought, never. This also personifies the Venus in Scorpio archetype. I'm having an elderberry uh, drink. It's a liqueur with some, you know, vodka. Elderberry, you know, it's a flower. It's like it comes from a flower. So it's delicious. It's from Asia. It's delicious. Like my outfit. You know, something I brought back from Asia. So we're going to jump right in. Because it's a lot, a lot, a lot to cover. Oh, yes. Venus in Scorpio reaches its highest complexity. So we're going to jump right in because we have a lot to cover. This is going to be more of a, an academic discourse. And I'm going to try to make it fun. But here, understand between from Scorpio onto Pisces, Mars and Venus, and all the other inner planets, the description of them esoterically, exoterically, will include a highly complex profile of the human ego and personality as it describes each individual person pertaining to the race, culture, and the individual experience. All of that, at this juncture, has to be thrown in the mix. Because we're talking about conditioning processes, which occurs upon growing up. Childhood development, gestational development, early childhood development, and then later on as adults, what we assimilate from our teachers, our environment, our, um, you know, everything adds and plays a role in the development of a human being at this juncture and at this point, okay? Please remember to donate for content, and please be able to, um, I hope you guys can come to Dubai next month and be in my travel group. Okay, so um, I'll talk about that in due time. All right, so we are going to jump right in. I'm going to select the music, right? And we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about Venus in Leo. Uh, Venus in Scorpio part two. Okay, so let us get the music ready. Okay, and see, oh wow, it's not letting me do it, it's not letting me do it, you know, and that's too bad, that's too bad, 
Oh boy. You know, when the universe doesn't want you to do something, it, it truly is really, um, I don't want that. I don't want it. Now, see, so now I'm determined. I'm going to reset, restart, just restart. Okay. Understand that as a pre-existing, a pre-existing condition. Not speaking esoterically, we're talking about Venus uh, in Scorpio. And Venus in Scorpio, the people that are born with Venus in Scorpio are here to inwardly learn how to relate to the depths of their souls, okay? The inner life, okay? Through this type of intense self-examination, this focuses the nature of the Scorpio person to be uh, motivated by what his intentions are, what his desires are, what his fears are, okay? Uh, through an intense self-examination that has focused on the nature of their motivations, they're able to figure out who they are, you know, and kind of gauge themselves, okay? These individuals born with Venus and Scorpio are psychologically oriented within themselves and consequently towards other people. So here and now we are taking out a more esoteric point of view of Venus and Scorpio. And that has to be discussed because again, here we have the personality and ego region is greatest complexity. A lot of people with Venus and Scorpio don't understand themselves, don't understand their behaviors and their intentions and their motivations. And it could be so deeply subtle and insidious that they don't know quite how to uh, bounce back from that, okay? They don't know how to navigate themselves to find out who they are, to find out the totality of who they are. Because these people born with Venus and Scorpio were born without a reference point. Now, what do I mean by that? That they were born without a reference point. Uh, these people were born without a reference point in the sense that they didn't know how to latchkey or cling on and still feel in, excuse me, independently safe and secure. And that's tough. And I and, and I just and I just made right now a very, very basic generality. I'm gonna go into specifics. As soon, excuse me, as soon as I, you know, find the music that I am looking for, and I have. Okay, so now I can be a little bit more motivated to do this, <laughs> because this is a lot of work, okay? There we go. That's better. Okay, now understand a little loud. Understand that in order for you to understand yourself and know the totality of your self being, you have to understand that you are God having a human experience. And that this human experience, translating as Scorpio, is going to dominate a life of intensity of pure intensity, but it's more than that. But talking on a mundane level, the Venus of Scorpio man or woman is coming back here for many lifetimes of feeling like they don't know themselves. They don't know who they are. They want to find out who they are. They want to learn who they are to their own self-analysis, to their own deep introspection, and then bringing that out into the surface to figure out their environment and those within it, and how to manipulate it, how to control it, and how to gauge themselves within that environment that's constantly changing because the Venus and Scorpio man and woman is constantly assessing his environment, both internally and externally, and those within it. 
he is constantly or she is constantly monitoring what's going on in their environment both internally and externally the Venus and Scorpio person resembles a coil a, a coil you know that can spring up like a slinky but this coil when it brings it contracts it contracts and expands the Venus in Scorpio psychology is that of contraction and expansion contraction and expansion psychologically every time there's a contraction there is a deep focus that they're looking at whatever it is and when there's the expansion there's a revelation of an insight about themselves or about the environment or about other people that they didn't know before the stronger the coil of contraction when it expands you know the, the stronger it contracts that same intensity will, it will expand like a slinky right like an accordion that expansion is a deeper level of consciousness and knowledge that they are learning about themselves the environment and those within it and when it constricts they withdraw they go inward and they appear like they are withdrawing from the world and from within themselves, from within the psyche of themselves. And that's actually true. They are doing that. Because they are constantly trying to examine themselves and figure out who they are at every turn of their experience. And this is something that's not openly obvious to the outside observer. This is why this Venus and Scorpio, man or woman, is always silent, always quiet. You're like, what the fuck is going on here? Why are they so fucking quiet all of the time? They are trying to assess how they fit in the environment that they're in and how they relate to it and how the environment is a part of them and vice versa. It is a monitoring and assessing their role at every moment and at every waking life of their existence, how they relate to the inner environment and the outer environment. Again, that coil, that spring. This is evident for those born with Venus in Scorpio. More calmer now. Okay? Venus in Scorpio, as I talked in part one, they're more with the, <gasps> the personality. Here, we're more concerned with part two, with the soul structure of the person born with Venus in Scorpio, which is quite complex quite complex and has different evolutionary requirements than that of the ego-based Venus and Scorpio personality. And to do the sign justice, I have to discuss both, don't I? And that's why this video is going to take an hour to do. It's just too much information to skim through the surface. It's about five hours of information, just Venus and Scorpio. You wait until we get into Mars and Scorpio. And then all the other signs that the ego and personality takes higher forms of complexity. And now we have to be in agreement with psychologists, psychiatrists, psychotherapists, and social workers that have dedicated their lives into the psychological helping professions. Here, uh, uh, social science and astrology reach a parallel. No one is high. At first, astrology was higher because it offers the template of the human ego and personality. But it really means nothing if it isn't coupled by empirical experience. And here now we have a plateau where academic and empirical experience, the primary anti uh, primary world, and that of the esoteric romantic astrology of the Hellenistic world now reach a parallelogram well, where now both are relative we can learn as much from a psychotherapist or a psychologist about the behavioral dynamics of a person born with village and scorpio as we can learn from an astrology about that same placement and position okay but one focuses on the behavioral aspect of the village and scorpio person while the other deals with the psychological, psychosocial, and emotional, psychological aspect of the Venus in Scorpio. Astrologers will detail why the Venus in Scorpio is the way he is or she is and why they act the way they are. Scientists, material scientists, can only guess through empirical data, trial and error, and their all personality tests that they 
create to figure out and make a professional assessment according to mental health standards of the human ego and personality. And they have it partially correct. Partially correct. The other aspect has to come from astrology. Because the psychological bed, bedrock of why people act the way they act, you, you are not going to find in the psychological helping professions in fields of psychology and psychiatry. That's going to be esoteric knowledge that's going to come through astrology and only astrology. So if you are someone that's in therapy, as many Venus and Scorpio people are usually found to be in therapy, you need to have a therapist, a psychotherapist, or psychologist, or psychiatrist that's very advent in astrology, or find, or have hire yourself an astrologer that has a clinical background like myself, that is able to see the two and blend and make a mosaic about who you are and why you are the way you are. Here, understand that personality reaches its highest complexity. And I'm going to try to make a go of it here. Okay? We're going to break things down into 14 points. 14 points. The first point that you have to understand, which I've already mentioned, is that the present bond with Venus and Scorpio relates towards himself and only towards himself in a deeply personal way where other people are excluded from his internal world. Okay? The Venus and Scorpio person, you can identify them because they always ask the questions, why? 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 Why are you doing this? How come you did that? Why are you doing this? How come you did that? Why? 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 You know, they, they, they ask a lot of questions about why about things. Not only about their own personal life, but those of the environment and those, of the, and those people within it. They want to find out everything about you and they ask why's of things and uh, my partner is in Scorpio and he has Venus in Scorpio and he does that all the fucking time always ask him why are you doing this why did you do this why? And, and, and you know what you should say because my ego feels like it and Aries moon my ego feels like it and nobody gonna tell me no fucking different now he's got a Leo moon which is just as powerful so we're always like, the, we we represent the War of the Roses. But Virgo can handle that, and so can Scorpio. But understand that this type of um, intense self-analysis that the Venus and Scorpio does, does it because they have, they want to make sure that they are in control of very nuance of behavior and action that comes out of them. They don't want someone else to pull the strings. They want to pull their own strings. Be their own puppet master. And not have nobody else do that. They're in total control of their total aspect of who they are internally, emotionally. You're never going to find a sign of all the 12 signs of the Zodiac that's so self-controlled, so self-contained, and so self-functional, like Capricorn, than you would Scorpio. But everything costs a price. Everything. You have to pay a price along the way for that type of intense self-discipline and control. And this is why Scorpio is so harsh when it comes to dealing with others. Because the demands that it puts on itself is the same demand that it puts on others. And if Scorpio can handle it and meet its own standards, regardless of how mild or severe, then he expects for you to also toe the line and follow suit right along with him or her. And if you can, then you're weak and you are worthy to be destroyed. This is what the psychological aspect of the Venus and Scorpio personality and ego won't tell you. You know I'm right. So... You, you have to understand that um, the first point is the fact that they are so hard on themselves and they question themselves at every point, at every level, at every instance that there's no way that they're not going to do that to their partners, their loved ones. Yeah? Venus in Scorpio.
Now, the third point, well, let me uh, reiterate the first point because we're going to cover 14 points here. The first point is self-knowledge. Self-knowledge radiates. It's like, it's like a vibration, like cancer. Cancer radiates a vibration from within. And they know when you're lying, when you're cheating, when you're... It's a vibe. It's very indicative of the water signs. We see this in Scorpio. It's a vibe. A feeling. They know things that you don't know. If you are fucking some woman or man, and you're dealing with the Scorpio, and the Scorpio, and you're hiding it from Scorpio... Trust me, he's going to know. And he's going to dream about it. Or she's going to dream about it. And they're going to know the person, how you met, everything. Everything! It's terrifying. It's scary. Don't fuck with Scorpios. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Because they're going to know. I'm telling you, they're going to know. So, the Venus and Scorpio person, because you understand, you have to understand. That Venus, let's break it down a minute. Venus represents love and romance and relationships. And relationships. Love and romance doesn't belong to Venus. It belongs to Leo. But love and romance of everything, life, nature, God, everything. But with that same devotion of love and romance that we find in Leo is exalted in Libra. As she gives the same love and devotion and feeling that we as Leos give to nature to an individual human being. So now, instead of the sun being the center of your life, a human being becomes the center of your life. When you're dealing with Venus in Scorpio. And that scares Scorpios or people with the Venus in Scorpios. They don't want to put that kind of energy, that kind of devotion, that kind of trust on someone. Because what if they let them down? What if they let them down? There's, a, there's something here that I'm not talking about that's deeply embedded in the Venus and Scorpio person. And I'm going to tell you what that is in a minute. Let me just take a sip of my little elderberry. <laughs> my Tito Rodriguez. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and, oh, it goes well. It goes well with this treatise. When you come to my seminars, the next time I'm going to have Tito Rodriguez playing in the background. So you can know what I'm hearing. And you can, you know where I get my Leo inspiration. You know? You missed the conference. A shame that you did. A shame. But there will be others. My next one is in Dubai. And if, you're, if you can, you know, afford to get there, i love to have you. Okay. So, we have here... Uh, Self-knowledge radiates and vibrates an intense curiosity about people, places, and things. So that's the first thing. There's an intense curiosity about people, about places and things, about, about what makes people tick, what makes things run, what makes things, you know, function. Real big issue there. Real big issue there. So they're going to question you and interrogate you. That's their style. The second point with dealing with Venus and Scorpio is that what notes, what notes did I put here? There's an essence that the Venus and Scorpio has on their aura. And it can be so intimidating and so frightening that it makes other people uncomfortable. Now, understand that this is not the intent of the person with Venus and Scorpio to do. But their mere being would demand that type of intensity. Remember, the key word here is intensity. Intensity of purpose. Intent. Very important if we are to understand that the dichotomy of Venus and Scorpio. Yeah. So So 
start and dealing with number two. Number two, we have to look at the fact that the essence of the Venus and Scorpio person can be frightening enough for people. Don't even matter. It don't even matter what you think or how you feel about the situation. The person vibing with Venus and Scorpio is not going to be concerned with what you think or what is your perspective on things. The Venus and Scorpio person is functioning under self-preservation principle. Me first, me second, me third. But what I have not told you yet, and it's been 26 minutes and 7 seconds, is where does the Venus and Scorpio person get that from? What the fuck happened in the Venus and Scorpio's evolutionary journey that has caused him or her to be so distrusting about people and put them to the grind? To the point of almost destroying them. Because the person with Venus and Scorpio, they like to test people like Capricorn. They want to test you and test if you are worthy of them. And they will test you mercilessly. Venus and Scorpio. Let's take a pause for a minute. Well, I like this spliff. <laughs> I'm not the only one talking to you. My other, my archons are right around. Some of you, some of you can see it. They're right behind me, and I'm smoking the right ganja that brings them out. There's seven of them right now. Oh, I know. Scorpio, well, I gotta bring out all the rubbers, all the stops with Scorpio because this is intense. Intense. So, Let me discuss the third point of the 40 points that we are yet to discuss. The third point to understand when we're dealing with the personality and ego of someone born with Venus and Scorpio is that the intensity, the intensity of this position of Venus and Scorpio resembles that of an eye of an eagle. The eye of an eagle or a hawk. Have you ever seen an eagle? Have you ever seen a hawk? Do you know the difference between an eagle and a hawk? Well, I've experienced both. I've held an eagle, and very rare that people should hold an eagle, the symbol of the United States, and a hawk. I've also experienced holding a hawk when I was in Africa, in Mauritius, last year. And if you know anything about a hawk and an eagle, two birds which belong to different phyla, Different subgenus of the of the fowl family, you know, both of you who understand the science and classification of birds. You know, that's a Virgo thing, of course, and you know I'm gonna know. And the classification of these birds, these fowl. And what it means because you have to understand that many ancients going back to Egypt name the scorpion. The eagle, the sphinx, the serpent or the snake, and then of course, the scorpion. The scorpion represents the lower personality of the person born under the stars of Scorpio. And the eagle represents the highest 
evolutionary level of the Scorpio person or ego or soul. Joan of Arc, if you know Joan of Arc, the story of Joan of Arc, she was burned at the stake. She was a Scorpio, and she had Venus in Scorpio. She was burned at the stake, and as she burned at the stake, because she went to rescue the dolphin, the dolphin of France, remember? And she was, she was, she went against the dolphin. She was burned at the stake, and 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 and, and, and a dove flew over her as her body burned. Joan of Arc, Venus in Scorpio. So the dove is also important as a symbolism when we're dealing with Venus in Scorpio. White, my crown, white, which is why I put it on to discuss that aspect of Scorpio. There is a, a, an aspect of Scorpio that's spiritual and it's beautiful and it's redeeming and liberating. But, but boy, do you got to pay a price to get there, baby. I got to read up. Give me a second. I have a large house. So if I was to go to the living kitchen to get ice, that would have been a good minute because I have like a long hallway and a long house. So I didn't want to do that and eat up the minutes. So I'm going to drink it like in the roar. It's all good. So, okay. Oh, God, that is Trump. Oh, my God. 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 It's too strong. Let me do a round. Guys, please forgive me. It's too strong. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for being so patient. Thank you for being so patient. <laughs> All right, I have to write. It was too strong. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Number three. The point number three. The intensity represents that of an eye of an eagle or a hawk. So if you don't understand that that of an eagle and a hawk, let me uh, explain it to you. Okay. Um. The hawk, the eye of the eagle is uniquely structured to have the ability to, I'm reading this uh, treatise, uh, the, the eye of the eagle is a uniquely structured, is uniquely structured to have the ability to focus on the large picture while at the same time telescopically zooming in on its point of focus. The same way the Venus in Scorpio person inwardly relates to his or her own inner landscape, the simulation or, uh, and simultaneously relates to the outer environment and other people. What is this passage saying? They're saying that the person with the Venus in Scorpio can zoom in on the big picture and at the same time zoom in on the specifics within that big picture. Now, that's a dangerous combination. It's like having a telescope within a telescope. So you can see the why of the, of the general, but then zero in on the specific. That is some fierce shit. The eagle has that ability. And so does the hawk, because they belong to the same genus. So, having said that, Let's jump into, let's go into point four. 
Point four at the Venus in, in Scorpio person is that he or she can see inwardly and relate to his inner or her inner landscape at the same time that they can assess the external landscape of his or her environment and that of people. That is some serious shit, folks. That means that you cannot escape the analytical nature of Scorpio. Now, you want to know what's fucked up? Is that the Venus in Scorpio... Now, now, let's go. Let's break it down. Venus is the goddess of love. She's the goddess of love, of beauty. But in Scorpio, she's in its she's in its detriment. What does that mean that she's in her a detriment? Well, notice I've said nothing about sex here, have I? And Scorpio rules sex. And Venus rules sex. The desire of sex. Scorpio doesn't mean anything sexually if the desire of sex is not there. And the desire of sex is not ruled by Scorpio. It's ruled by Venus. So to have Venus in Scorpio, the sign of sex and human sexuality, you would think that her being a woman of sexuality, it'd be like, hot damn, hot diggity. Not at all. Let's not forget that Venus has a Taurian side, which is indulgent, self-indulgent, and sexual and sensual. This connects to Scorpio. But there's another aspect to Venus that is not Taurian. It's Libra, which is not sexual, but it's a liberal and intellectual. So Venus here tends to bring the intellectual side of herself, which belongs to Libra, into the field of Scorpio. So we don't see a woman that is very sexual, even though she can be. Her sex is in her mind. And if she wants to, she will simulate it in physical plane, but not truly. Because in her opinion, the sex that she has in her mind can never be matched by anything real outside of the imagination. And we can all relate to that if you really think about it. If we have masturbate, isn't our masturbate, masturbatory fantasies far more exciting than our actual real life when we're having sex? I mean, come on, let's be honest about that. Let's be honest. I'm going to be having fantasies and busting in that, and I'll have a better time doing that than actually having sex with somebody. Because in my own mind, I can control everything, and, and I can create everything just the way I want it. Whereas when you are having sex in, in real time with a human being, you have to relate to that human being outside of the internal reality. And, and Scorpio represents both the internal reality of sex and the external reality of sex. And if I'm to do this combination justice, I will have to discuss that. So that's point number four, and we got 40 more to go. This is why I gotta make this an hour. Because the first one was, was personality. Here, we're dealing with the soul outside of the ego and personality, as I described in part one. All right. Now, let's go into number five. Number five. Hold on, let me do a little. Aso balo, so balo, machacalo, machacalo, machacalo. Tito Rodriguez, you know? I love that man. Okay. Inwardly, um, those born with Venus and Scorpio engage in a practice that you would never think that they do. It's fierce, but fucked up at the same time.
And here, uh, we see the Venus and Scorpio person monitoring. And please write that word down somewhere. Because we're going to come to it. It's called monitoring. The Venus and Scorpio person likes to monitor his environment at all times. And the people in it. He also likes to monitor his inner environment and then engage it from the external environment. And he does this to see how he has grown. Or if he hasn't grown, it has remained stagnant, he or she. Then they'll create a crisis that will propel them to the next level. So understand that the Venus and Scorpio men and women, they're constantly monitoring their environment. They're constantly, it, it, it's a, they could have compulsive disorders because they're constantly monitoring, monitoring, assessing, monitoring, engaging themselves in that monitoring, in that engagement, in that assessment. They are constantly doing that, constantly doing that. But I haven't, I haven't told you why. I'm holding that for last. There is a reason why the Venus and Scorpio men and women is so insecure and vibrates this intense insecurity that forces them to discover who they are at a core level. And the only way that they can discover who they are at a core level, now talking esoterically, is by testing other people. They like to test people, to test people to see where their loyalty lies, to see if they are considered worthy of them. Now here we go into a little bit of sadism because that's very capable with the uh, uh, Venus and Scorpio. Hold on, hold on. How are you, my darling? I'm on the air doing a video on Venus in Scorpio. So you are on the air. So when you see this video, you're going to see yourself on the air, my darling. Everybody say hello. Say hello to my, to this, my lovely Aries. No, uh, say hi, well, say hi, hi. So uh, as soon as I'm the hi, she's lovely. Okay, so as soon as we are done, I will be contacting you, but you're on the air. <laughs> hi, but she says hello, bye. Are you going to love it? <laughs> bye. <laughs> okay, I'll call you this evening, okay? All right, bye. Sorry about that, gentlemen, you know, I, you know. This is why I don't be doing videos, because I also get a lot of clients and I call... And, you know, and that's the basis for doing this, right? So I got to stay on top of that. Okay. So, what I was saying is that there is a method to the madness. No? There is a reason why Scorpio has this intense need to control his environment, both internally and externally. There is a knowing Gnawing and annoying insecurity the Venus and Scorpio men and women possess, and they don't like to talk about it. And, 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 and it's a fear that something is going to happen to them. So now I'm going to discuss what it is. Okay. Let me, uh, I'm looking at my notes. I, uh, inwardly, they are forever monitoring their interior environment, their ongoing state of beingness. You know, it's like they are assessing who they are moment to moment to moment. It's almost like they don't trust who they are moment to moment to moment. Because from one moment to another, they can change who they are. Okay. And they don't seem to have a grasp as to why this is happening to them, okay? And, and, and we're talking here in a general way. Within this state of uh, beingness, the Venus and Scorpio person will then zoom in on any giving emotion, feeling, sensation, thought, inspiration, dream, or desire in order to understand the casual factor... The why, like I mentioned before, the why, 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 the why of its origin, okay? Understanding the casual factor in this way does lead 
to self-knowledge or understanding. And that's the, that's the smoking gun. It's all about trying to figure out who they are through the agency of other people, through the buffering of other people and the environment. They can figure out who they are. Because like I said, a man knows himself, a man knows himself by action, by thought, never. And this, it, it can be applied here when we're dealing with Venus and Scorpio. The Venus and Scorpio men and women want to know what makes them tick and why it makes them tick that way. And I haven't discussed why yet. I'm leaving that for last. Paloma, Paloma, Paloma. No, no. I'm lying. I love the fact that my soul was born into the Latin culture. My soul loves the Latin culture. It suits me well with my Leo energy. It's lively, fiery, and jumpy, and just, I love it. And an attractive, glamorous culture. So I'm very blessed to have been born into this culture. My soul and my ego thoroughly enjoys it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And with my Venus and Jupiter and Leo, I'm allowed to self-indulge and get away with it. <laughs> mm. Okay, so let's now discuss. Uh, with, uh, let's j now jump in to um. <sighs> Let me say another point about. The point five, okay. <coughs> Going to my notes here. Uh, again, I talk about the sensation, feeling, thought, inspiration, dream, desire, in order to understand the cultural fact as to why of their origin, why they are who they are, why do they feel the way they feel. The Venus and Scorpio person always asks these questions about themselves: Why they are the way they are? Well, how they feel the way they feel? Why do they feel the way they feel? Okay? It's a vibration that re resonates from within. Okay? The reason, the, no, well, actually, let me go, the intensity of the internalized focus radiates, uh, and when I say internalized focus, we're talking about focusing everything about you from within and making that the reference point from within. When that occurs and you don't rely on outside reference to define who you are from within, that creates a backlash effect that other people around you feel. And let me explain to you what that is. I wrote it down here in my notes. The intensity of the internalized focus radiates outwardly in such a way as to cause others to feel generally threatened without necessarily knowing why. So the person with the Venus in Scorpio can make other people feel uncomfortable. And the people that feel uncomfortable with the person with the Venus and Scorpio around them don't know why. They don't know why they feel uncomfortable. So this is why the Venus and Scorpio man and woman creates lots of enemies. Because there are people that hate the fact that you are so in inwardly insulated and that you are so self-reliant, so self-sufficient, and you don't need anybody, that this causes an instinctual threat to those around you because it questions their own ego and essence. That's deep, Scorpio. And I don't even think you're, you're, gonna, you're understanding what I'm saying. It's fucking deep. But I just, just that, that pucked a punch right there. And if you don't get it, then you're not out of the evolution to understand it yet. But if you do understand it from this video, God bless you. Because now you can understand and take control as to how to manipulate the, the circumstances governing and dictating your inner and your outer environment. Because let me tell you, the more you are comfortable in your own skin, the more uncomfortable people will be around you. Because Scorpio is such an exceptional sign of self-respect, self-discipline, and transcendence that not all of us fall on the same keel. 
to reach that same level of evolution and transcendence. That, that happens from different evolutionary states from many lifetimes. That just doesn't happen in one incarnation and it doesn't happen overnight. So understand that when you are involved with a Venus and Scorpio person, you are dealing with someone that's very evolved. Very evolved in the sense that they know how to handle themselves and they know how to extrapolate from their environment, including people as their environments, whatever they need, and be unscathed. There is so much that I got to talk about. I didn't go through all the 14 points, but I, I've been instructed not to continue and that this is enough to give you because then I have to uh, move into uh, Venus inside the terrace before I go back and do Mars, and Libra, and so far. So we are done with this combination.